Hi guys, Rich from Whitewash here. So in front of us, we I have got the uh, the next batch of bases for my from my personal weld eaters. So because it's a lot of batch painting, I thought and try and make a, a video and tutorial and play about with my photo, uh, my video editing skills. See if I can improve them. But um, yeah, so so far at my weld eater bases, I've got a plasticor H bar for the barbed wire posts, a modelling barbed wire for the barbed wire itself, and Games Workshop school packs for for the schools. Uh, the the brown texture is actually a, a Vallejo mud effects. There's uh, two different kinds: European mud and thick mud. Uh, they're going to look the same when they're painting anyway, because I will be painting these. And the Games Workshop flight stands for my flyers. And some metal rods for my skimmers. So, I've not done every single base with barbed wire and every single base with skulls. Uh, because it it makes the, the overall project just look a little bit too cluttered on the bases. So, we do have just bases with the uh, with the mud effects so now this is all done it's all dry it's all ready to paint so I shall uh, swap frame so the first layer that I'll do is with a cheap acrylic this one's crafters choice it is a uh, burnt umber and uh, yeah so I need to make it into the right consistency to be able to go through the airbrush. So I'll grab my jar. This stuff's quite thick, so it does take quite a bit of thinning out. But I'm going to be using this more as a primer as well as the first the first layer. So I'll just thin it out with a, a bit of my homemade uh, thinner. Grab an old brush. And I want it just not so much liquidy, but a little bit thicker than milk, which is the uh, usual consistency when you're putting stuff through your airbrush. Just a little bit more, still a bit thick. about the right consistency there. So I'm only going to be working on the six bases, the rest will be done off camera because it is just a lot of repetition. So I shall uh, get back to you when I get my airbrush all set up and uh, actually show you how thick I lay it onto the bases itself. So I've got my airbrush out, compress this all nice and full now, and just tip that into the paint well. Test it, it's coming out okay, and literally just coat the whole base. So you're going over the skulls, so just make sure that it's got a, the first coat itself. Straight over the barbed wire. Now there's not much difference in colour to the uh, to the thick mud, but uh, it is a shade lighter, and the extra coat just takes the grittiness out of the uh, the mix. Just make sure I've covered everything.
like that. So that needs to dry now. And I'll switch off the camera while I crack on with the rest of the boards and be back shortly. Right, so now they're dry, I've got the next colour, which is uh, Boosty Brown by Vallejo Game Colour. Now I've thinned it out to a milky consistency this time. And with this colour, it needs to be a little bit more controlled because I'm only aiming for the centre of the base. Like so. Then, as soon as this dry, I'll show you the next step. But while I'm doing, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I can crack on with uh, the rest of the the bases. And I would do this off a camera, but just to show you how quick this method is. It is literally just aiming in the centre of the bases and giving it a wee coat. It's easy as that. And then when it dries, you've got your your layers done and your shading. This will get amplified by adding washes and the next couple of stages that we'll be doing. But for now, that's that's the colour that we're aiming for. Back shortly. So now that they're dry. And you've got the tonal difference in there now. I'm going to knock it all back with sepia dipping formula from Vallejo. It comes in a in a jar, a plastic jar. So I've transferred it into a dropper bottle. Using a nice thick brush, cheap brush. Just for washers, I'll just go over the whole thing. With quite a thick coat of it. When I wait for this wash to dry, I will be making sure that it's on a flat surface so it levels off in the uh, in the right places. But it also helps to blend in the uh, the beastie brown. And that's it. That's for the wash. As I said, this uh, this technique's built for for speed and the best end result I can for that time frame. And just wait for these to dry now. While I'm waiting, I'll crack on with the rest. Right, so now the wash is dry, I'll start picking out the detail. So, with the skulls, I'm going to be using Bone White by Game Colour Vallejo. I'm not going to dilute this, so it's just going to be straight out the bottle. Just a wee smidgen on the wet palette. And then 
and we will just be block color over the schools. Don't have to be too precise, it's just to get the block colour on it. Don't have to worry about being too smooth either because uh, the texture will uh, help with the, the next couple of stages for them. Just like that. <clears throat> so while I'm waiting for them to dry, I'll move on to the uh, the barbed wire. <coughs> now the barbed wire is just a uh, lots of dry brushing and. I'm using Rizzo Rust by Citadel and it's the uh, the dry brush compound that they do so I don't need to dry it off too much Using my makeup brushes to do this with. Let it pick up some. Take a little bit off. <clears throat> and then literally just dry brush the barbed wire and the barbed wire posts. And that is literally all you do for the bad wire. That's how you do the bad wire. Nice and easy. Quick. And it just breaks up uh, breaks up the bases quite nicely. Gives it a bit more bit more colour with the orange. <clears throat> just gonna speed up the skulls drying a little bit. And the next stage with the skulls is a sepia wash. <clears throat> sepia wash by GW. 
This is thinner than a dipping formula, so it won't leave. Well, it won't stain the skulls as much as uh, the dip. That's why they're done after the dip. So it's just a. A wee wash, nothing too heavy, just to amplify any creases or and that is then pretty much done. <coughs> <coughs> now, with my bases. They are finished up this stage. Now, in future, after the marines have been put onto the bases, that's when I'll start adding the uh, the pigment powders, and the pigment powders will obviously uh, run off of the the weld eaters onto the base as well, tie them into the bases a little bit. Uh, yeah, and the last step that I do with a miniature is finish painting the rim. So the rims at the minute are a bit brown and stained from the washes and stuff like that um, I paint the rims at the end because if you do it before you do the pigments you end up with pigments all over the black and it just makes it look a mess so that is the last stage but as a whole they are now ready for the miniatures be, to be mounted on and I'll show you that in the future anyway guys thanks for watching like subscribe leave a comment this is the first time I'm trying to loop edit and do snazzy things with uh, with the videos. So any comments will be greatly appreciated. And until next time folks, take it easy. Thanks.